relationship are the most important thing we can talk about. Because truth be told, when you encounter these females who seem to hate men, where do you guys think that comes from? I would say uh, childhood, um, predominantly. Because I think about it, like being raised around a single mother, especially if this mother um, dislikes the dad, she'll tell horrible stories about the father. And she'll probably um, speak about him horribly in his absence. And now the young lady is growing up believing that all men are like this and having her mind shaped by one person's opinion um, on an instance. And that kind of shapes the reality from there on out. Um, I believe, I think it starts from childhood. That was a really interesting one because it wasn't even necessarily that the father did anything wrong. It was the mother sharing her negative view of the father. So the, cha the daughter being a female, identifying through the mother, hearing her say negative things about her father, that created a perspective. I would agree there. Just to piggyback on what Jabrizi said, um, bad advice from their parents and uh, lack of, uh, they're dealing with males, not men. Mm. How many times have we talked to a female and she kind of be on some goofy stuff and it was like, I was the last for a real one, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real. It's, it would start with the father and the initial relationships they first start having because I've been dealing uh, with the woman and um, she didn't really have, her father was in her life, but it, it wasn't a good relationship we have, he had with her. And um, after like when she's in college, she had like a bunch of bad relationships with men or, or boys really. Um, about four of them where, the, where she just got cheated on or taken advantage of. Um, yeah, it's mostly just uh, the initial relationships that they first start having with men, they, they get taken advantage of. And then it's, they, they throw these walls up and they, even when they see a good man, over time, it, it takes a long time for them to just start breaking those wall, breaking through those walls. I agree with you there, and, and no one really mentioned the kind of the big one. Troy. Uh, a lot of times, a lot of women have a lot of childhood sexual mm. Talk to me. That's really it. I've spoken to many women, and I've gotten women to open up about you know what's going on in their childhood. I knew a girl in particular that I was friends with. Well, we started out as FWB, but I decided to just <laughs> put her as a friend. I thought it was better to just keep her as a friend. You know, once she told me her story, I thought I would, I would have been better as a friend for her. She was telling me how, as a child, she was taken advantage by her brother, her cousins, her dad, uh, men in the church. And she had a best friend who, uh, one of her cousin's friends even took advantage of her at one point. It got to the point she stopped. She just let herself go. She didn't even want to, you know, take care of her appearance because she didn't want men to be attracted to her because she didn't want that attention. So the reason I, I push you to really think about this is because you have women, and you, you mentioned the sexual abuse. And we also didn't mention a good old-fashioned ass kicking, right? You know, some of these women are getting their asses kicked within the walls of their home. Domestic abuse, things like this. Now, here's the funny thing. When a woman ends up in a relationship with a man who physically abuses her, he didn't introduce her and say, hi, I'm Ike Turner, right? He didn't introduce himself and say, hi, I'm going to kick your ass for the duration of our relationship. He seemed like a nice guy, just like you and just like you, when she met him. And so you have a woman who's been victim of maybe something in childhood. Maybe it was just an absent father. Or maybe she was victim of a bad father in childhood. He didn't abuse her, but he abused her mother. Or maybe she didn't experience any problems in childhood, and then she grew into a woman, and she ended up with a guy who physically abused her. Whatever the case is, these guys look just like you and I. So as Adam said, these fake guys messed it up for a real one. You come to the girl, and you're a perfectly good guy, but she can't acknowledge that because too many guys who look just like you used to kick her ass. So a lot of the women in the society are broken. And I can say consistently among all of the racial demographics, among all of the religions, when you're a mature man and you doctor fill that woman in the right way, she's going to open up. And what you find is that ch children, male and female, experiencing sexual abuse in 
childhood is far more common than you realize. You've probably dated a female who was victim of sexual abuse in childhood, and you might have never found out, especially if she didn't view you as a man, which is someone that she views as strong enough, responsible enough, honorable enough for her to share a dark secret with. So I say that to say this. When we're talking about the rights of the lady saints, the reason I thought in terms of rights, meaning what do they have a right to, the first thing that stood out to me was number four, which is to be protected, which not only are you protecting them from shielding them from the outside world, you also have to make sure that they're protected from you being a tyrant, you know, you misbehaving. And so that was the one of the things that I thought was hugely important. And outside of religions, you really don't see the rights of the female defined anywhere within the relationship. And so I thought that was hugely important. Before we kind of put a book in on this little piece right here, because I just wanted you guys to understand, like, yeah, we could complain about women being f***ed up. And though we didn't f*** up any particular woman, because I've never done anything greasy to a female, and I have to deal with the baggage she carries, but we have to understand kind of where that came from. You feel me? Um, before we put a book on, in on that, anyone have anything they want to add on, on to that one? I just wanted to say one of the main things, too, is ignorance, I think, because um, I wanted to say bad decisions, but people make bad decisions because most of the time they're ignorant. Like, you don't know what you don't know. So um, the reason why a lot of times women choose the wrong guy and keep doing the same things is because they don't know what a real guy looks like. They don't know what a real woman looks like, how they're supposed to act to attract a good guy. So that's why I think, you know, meetings like this are powerful because it's all about being aware, you know, growing awareness. So I think the, the main cure is going to be awareness because no matter what happened to you in your childhood no matter the abuse you as an individual you have to take responsibility for your decisions you know your choices your mindset and in fixing it or you can just say well i had a fucked up childhood so this is it for me right. you know what i mean so right. for men and women you have to grow your awareness and you know rid out your ignorance and i think that'll create a better society uh, and better relationships in the future for men and women well i think that ignorance is sometimes a piece of it and I think other times, people who are broken, they're hurting on the inside. It might sound crazy, but they want to continue hurting because they don't know any better, which is to say that if you grow up and the people who love you are the ones who cause you pain, you know, as Troy said, girl's father molested her, which to me is just like a, the most vile thing you can experience. You have to live with the person who's abusing you. That's terrible. But that's the guy who loves you. And your mother is guilty, too, because she's letting it happen, right? I don't know how she could be unaware. And she loves you. So the people who love you are giving you pain. So as she evolves, her understanding of love is connected to what? That's the definition of it to her. So when she seeks love and relationship, she continues on that road. So you say it might be ignorance. When she meets you, she might be able to even tell, like, this is a good guy. He's not going to do anything bad to me. But that's too foreign. She doesn't want that, which is why I just came out with a video called Why Girls Don't Like Nice Guys. Because they're broken. They can't handle a good guy. They don't know what that's about. They don't even feel worthy of a good man because they've been put down so far, and they feel like they're a low person. And when you feel low, you don't feel like you deserve good things. Right, so I, I think you're right. Ignorance is one piece, and the other piece is conditioning. Yes. How do you bring me to that? How do you bring me to that? Because it's, it's like, I have a front man. I mean, growing up in the in my neighborhood, I, all of the women that I talk, um, I would say the overwhelming majority of the women that I talk to, they didn't dealt with some kind of sexual assault or rape by their uncle or some sort of, like. Are they damaged goods at that point, or like how? Did, well, I'm not gonna lie to you and tell you that that is the fresh water. It ain't the fresh water. We know that, right? Yeah, his damn, his damn show ain't that Fiji. Uh, but you could still drink Aquafina and live, right? <laughs> you dig? <laughs> you know, you got the Aquafina get you by. You know, a part of what we're talking about here, everything we try to teach leads us on a path, and it leads the female on a path. You hear me? Can you solve a problem you don't know about? No. What's one of the first things I tell you to do with a female when she comes into your influence? What are you going to do? What? Dr. Filler. Dr. Filler. You heard me. So that's the first step one is opening up so you can figure out what's even in there. You feel me? You don't want to 
try to play basketball in the dark with the lights out, you ain't going to get the ball in the rim. You Dr. Phil or you turn those lights on, see what's there. So once you see what's there and she pours that out to you, the first thing you receive is the way you build bonds with people is by two primary mechanisms. One is the exchange of secrets, privileged information. The other one is the exchange of deep service, meaning that you, you do something for someone in your mind. You're like, well, I did all this stuff for this person for free voluntarily. I must, I must like them or... You know, like I've, I've gone in too deep. I've invested too much. And that's essentially what happens when they give deep acts of service. When you get these two things, you will be bonded to the woman. And when a woman has deep, dark secrets that she's shared with you, you're a special person to her because you will be of the few who know that. Huh? Now, when you get these secrets out and you have a list of, say, traits that the woman should have, whether it's accountability, being cooperative, things like that, you have a metric. Right. So you can tell when she's on track or when she's off track because you say, hey, these are the ideals that we're living by. So when she's off track, you're able to have that conversation of like, OK, you, it, it seemed like in this situation you were not aligned with being accountable. This is what I observed. What did you observe? You can put that down. OK, this is where I think you need to make an amendment and this is where you think it. But why? And then you want to ask them a little deeper. Why do you think you looked at the situation that way? Why do you think you reacted that way or behaved that way? Often it may connect back to that, that fear that they have or that traumatic experience. But because you know about it, they're able to bring it up and express it and you can actually discuss it and reach a solution. Now, if you would have never Dr. Filder, right? And you found that she wasn't trusting you, she wasn't following your lead, and you asked her to explain why. Like, why can't you follow what I'm trying to tell you? And she never told you that she had been victim of her own father who was her first male leader, and she never told you that, then she would never be able to give you the truth on why she's not following you. You see what I'm saying? So now that you've dug all that up with a shovel, now she can be real and you can make real progress. Now, let, let me be real with you, saints. If you got Fiji right next to Aquafina, which one should you drink from? Fiji. Talk to me. Talk to me. Hey, I'm just being real here. But you don't always have that Fiji right there. Sometimes you got to take that Aquafina and work with it. But I would never tell you not to plant your seed in fertile ground. I always want you guys to go for the best. In business, I want you to go for the best. Drive the best car you can drive. Have the best bank account you can have. Have the best woman you can have. I'm not saying we should throw anyone away. I'm saying we should understand women and work with them. You might find a woman who you know, had some bumps and scrapes on her road to success, and you can deal with that. Um, but you need to be mindful of what's there.